Hey everybody, Brett from Star Wars Gaming here, back with a brand new Crusader Kings 2 series. Um, we're finally back after taking a little over a week off at the end of our Elder King series. And so I left it up to you guys to decide what series we were going to do next. And at the time of recording this, um, the majority of you had decided that we should do a Game of Thrones uh, mod playthrough. And so that's what we're going to do. Um, the faction that we're playing, as I'll get into a little bit more in just a second, was also one that you guys suggested. But it was something that I had already considered, and so when a few of you also brought it up, that really solidified it in my mind. And so we are going to be playing as... Let's scroll in here. Oh, wrong spot. There it is. So we are playing as Sir Nelsor Raven Raventree of Weeping Bay. And we have three sons, Rook, Robert, and Ryland. This is the father of the characters from our Clash of Kings playthrough. And this is our current character in the Clash of Kings playthrough. But you may notice that they're really, really young. And that's because we're playing in the year 8282, which is the year of, or at least the first year of Robert's Rebellion. So we're kind of going back in time a little bit. We're playing as the father of our characters from Clash of Kings, although all three of them will be in this as well, as you already saw, because here they are. And so, unfortunately, the area that we were in charge of in A Clash of Kings isn't really an option in this mod. Um, it's roughly in this area, East Melt here. It's more or less right there, possibly at the uh, eastern half of Last River here. But neither of those was an option, and so I went with Weeping Bay, which was the closest one I could choose that was a single province. So, our goal in this playthrough is sort of going to be um, anachronistic from our Clash of Kings playthrough, in that we're not going to just be kind of content with our little uh, lordship. We're going to try to expand to become a bigger player in the north, and hopefully in all of Westeros. And so to do that, we're probably going to have to cross a few people who uh, we wouldn't have crossed in the other game. But this is a different game. We're going to have fun with it. We're just kind of starting from a similar point with some characters that you guys might recognize. And it would be kind of fun to explore with. So, again, we're playing as Lord Nelsor. And so we're going to need to set up our lordship here. Um, we are obviously holding Weeping Bay. Weeping Bay is part of... Carhold, which makes us a vassal of uh, Harry and Karstark. So if we click on the Lordship of Carhold, or sorry, Rickard Karstark, his son is Harry and Karstark, my mistake. And obviously he is the vassal of Lord Paramount Eddard uh, Stark. So what we need to do first and foremost is probably declare our independence from Carhold. But before we do that, let's go into our laws and look at some stuff here. So, I uh, apologize if I kind of stumble my way through the menus. I've been playing the older version of Crusader Kings for our Clash, or not, sorry, for our Elder Kings series for quite a bit. And so I'm not used to the uh, updated UI, and it'll take me a little bit of time to get used to that. But it looks like we have Agnatic, Cognatic, Primogenitor, Inheritance which means that our uh, eldest son is going to inherit, but I think that means that females can inherit, yeah, but they're secondary to males. Um, we can change that, but uh, that will probably be way off. Let's see, the realm. I don't think we can really do much being such a minor lord. And obligations, this is cool. So I can... Uh, is this for my vassals? Or for, I imagine it's for my vassals, which I don't have any of. So that's not going to be important. Council will be important. Um, let's go here. We need a Castellan. Wow. Not a lot of great choices here. Let's see. So this is green. I'm used to the usual five, and these appear to be different, so let's read them. The Castellan is your chief advisor in charge of both the defense of your possessions and the day-to-day -day administration. He will rule in your stead when you are away. Okay, so he's a more all-around type thing, where the Justicar is more of like your chancellor. Got it. So I think the Justicar needs to be Leobald here. 
and I do not want him fighting. Hopefully that saves, and uh, Elder Kings he didn't save, and I had to do it at the beginning of every video. Our Master at Arms, that's going to be an easy choice. We'll go with Jonos, or Yonos. Uh, he should lead armies. Our Treasure will be Ethan. Do not want him leading armies. And our Spy Master is apparently going to be Lambard. And so who should our Castleman be? There's not a lot of great options here. Hmm. I guess we will go with Howland until a better choice arises or presents itself. Um, once our sons come of age, they might make a decent choice for that. So, let's see. You can oversee provinces. Since we only have one, I think that would be a decent choice. We can pacify or we can improve holdings. Once work on improving a holding is started... I don't... It, what's success? There's a f almost a 6% chance yearly, but I don't know exactly what that does. Let's just have him oversee it. I would like you to start fabricating claims on Eastmelt, maybe? Our Master at Arms should probably be training troops or training children. Let's see, that increases our levy size, that's what we want. And Treasure, we'll collect taxes. Spy Master, I'm going to hold out for this Spy Master at the moment because I might have a better job for him. We have minor titles that we can designate as well. Um, these are very similar to what we've seen in other kings. It's just all displayed on the menu to make it easier to keep track. So I think we'll hold off on these. I don't want to give them out just yet. Um, open council positions. We've already sorted that out. We need an ambition. Let's see. We could use some more children, I think. I'd like to have a daughter. So let's, yeah, there we go. Because marriage might be very advantageous for us. Uh, as you can see, House Raven Tree is being represented here by the uh, white tree on crimson. Very similar to what we're using in Clash of Kings. There's just no actual ravens above it. And we have minor titles that are grantable, but we don't care about that. So let us go ahead and get started. What? does our Lord's armies look like? Um, what did he do? Let's see. To the Rye Lord Nelser, your wisdom and mercy are legendary. I would like to offer you the honor of a place on my council as Chief General. I bid you join me in Carhold with haste. I'll accept, if only because that will give me um, the opportunity to maybe usurp him better so let's see he's got oh man it's gonna be really hard to overthrow these guys they've got like 3,000 men and I've got 800 so I don't know how I'm gonna do that but we'll see we shall see um, in the meantime let's look at let's see okay so full capacity is about 1100 we're going to need to make some alliances, and so to that end, I think we're going to need to definitely look at um, some sort of marriage. Uh, hold a melee, employ a new courtier. How much is that? It's free? Yeah, give me another courtier then. Uh, holy men, debutante. Hmm. Okay, so it's not free more. Good with coin, good with words, experienced at court, give me that. Ah, you dick. Okay, well, nothing we can do about that. Uh, let's look at our new courtier. I wish it would tell me what the name of the person was. Uh, Maester Ryum. Why aren't you, are you possibly the, no. I, that's interesting that on your council there's no like maester position. Oh, there is. There's several. Whoops. Okay, well, we'll appoint this then. And put you there. And I, Do I have a priest? I don't. Hmm. I might need to buy one. Yeah, let's do that. So we'll go into intrigue. 
And, oh, I can't do that for a while. Okay, so we'll have to wait on that. Um, I'm not going to appoint anybody there in the meantime. What have we got here? Uh, we were made master of the hunt. And I think what we should probably do is establish some sort of faction. Let's see. Depose Lord Rickard. Liege Loyalists. Overthrow the Monarchy of Carhold. So what would this do? Loyal to their liege, come what may. Members seek to force to abolish the monarchy and abdicate in favor of a new republic led by Lord Nelser of Weeping Bay. When sufficiently powerful, Lord Nelser of Weeping Bay may present an ultimatum to Lord Rickard Karstark. I don't know how effective a uh, faction is going to be considering we're the only vassal of his, but it's certainly worth a try. If we depose him, what exactly is going to happen? My lord, his grace King Eris has taken his last breath. May he repose in peace. Now his heir Prince Rhaegar Targaryen will take the throne and will rule the Seven Kingdoms henceforth. That's interesting. Um, yeah, he's the Mad King. So I guess uh, Jaime Lannister just ran him through. Hmm. If we depose him, what happens? Abdicate in favor of his heir no, we don't want to do that. We can try to overthrow the monarchy. I don't know if that's going to get us anywhere. Uh, important decisions are available. We can already demand it, huh? I didn't realize we were that powerful. Let's see. At peace is not a prisoner. I wish we could just demand our independence. Let's see. Oh, that's cool. You can find like Valerian steel swords and dragons, blood feuds, stuff like that. Well, let's go into diplomacy with Lord Rickard here. We can declare war, we can resign from his council, send him gifts, arrange marriages, betrothals, educate his children, kidnap, kill, incite revolt. Hmm. That would be interesting. So I could try to bait him into a war with Eddard Stark. Hmm. Let's do that. And then, if I could have my spy master, let's see, discourage vassals from associating with factions or recruit new members of our own. This is increasing the likelihood of intrigue events against them. I think that's what we want. Although he's not a very good character, so we'll see how effective that is. Um, festival, okay. So what does this do? Intrigue and diplomacy for two years. I'll just go with that. And holy sites, Castle Black, Winterwood, God's Hill, Heron Hall, and Fist of the First Men. Okay. So we've got, hmm, Lord Commander Winton. Okay. Interesting. I wonder how the uh, Night's Watch works in this. So it looks like we're winning against. Prince Rhaegar. Uh, hopefully this isn't bugged and it keeps throwing those at me. Very interesting indeed though. So where is this war happening right now? I would assume that everybody would be going at each other, but apparently not. Um, let's see, intrigue. Is there anybody willing to join? Oh, it'd be awesome to get him to come around. Hmm. I just, I wish there was a faction more appropriate to what we're trying to do. Like a, a Weeping Bay Independence faction or something. Let's see. What can we do with Lord Eddard? It'd be awesome to invite him to it. 
Okay, so Rook's ready for a Guardian. We'll uh, educate him ourselves. Let's see. Why do I have to send that to myself? That's kind of dumb. But yeah, he's already a pretty good character. He inherited our quick trait, and I think um, Ryland did as well. Robert didn't, unfortunately. Um, his nose in the scriptures and spends all his time among the priests. So, if we accept this, we could potentially lose Cynical. But he would become zealous. Hmm. Do we want him to be zealous? I don't... I don't mind zealous. Let's see... How do we want to educate him? No... Groomed for command. I would prefer to groom him for command, I think. I mean, he's eventually going to be leading his faction, so I think that um, making him a good commander is smart. Apparently we don't have enough money for a lot of this, though. <sighs> we'll spend highly to get Rook the best equipment possible. A very good tutor. We'll help him be successful. The basic equipment will suffice. Will suffice. And very essentials. I mean, this is our eldest son. We can't skimp on this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna splurge for the very good tutor. It seems like any other choice, like this, isn't an option. We don't have that much money, and this is going to hamper his learning. So we want to at least do that one. Uh, let's see. My lord has come to my attention that nobody's been designated as regent for Weeping Bay. Should the realm need it, needless to say, this is a perilous position. As surely. Squabble and rivalry will emerge without clear leadership. I humbly petition you name me your designated regent to avoid this sort of trouble. Ethan of the house. Uh, he doesn't have a house. Um, he's actually not a terrible choice. So I will award him the honorary title of designated regent. Okay, well, I didn't need to do that. I could have just accepted it. New Lord Commander with bright green hair. What the hell is happening? Night gathers, and now my watch begins. It shall not end until my death. I shall take no life. Oh, this is just the Night's Watch thing. Okay, so Lord Commander has died. Allah will replace him and will serve the realm in these troubled times. Okay. So can we send children to the uh, wall? Like, can I tell him to take the black? Maybe once he's of age. That would be a cool option, though, because you can... Uh, in you know the base game, you can tell your son to take the uh, Holy Vows or something and become like a priest if you don't want them to inherit. And I assume that you know the Night's Watch in this would work similarly. He's working out to be pretty good. Hopefully he gets better than uh, just a regular poor fighter. I imagine that continues to tick up, though, to like veteran and so on. So, Zealous. Alright, well, he's a pretty solid character already. He's about as good as any of my vassals. So, at least there's that. He's only six years old, so he's got plenty of room to grow. How is our intrigue doing? We're still only here. I just don't see us really... Oh, no. Let's see... Robert would be a good marshal, so I'm going to groom him for command as well. Unfortunately, I don't have the money to do much other than the essentials. Let's see, I can make this demand. I don't know what exactly he's going to do should I do that. Hmm. Let's see, what's the white book? Oh, the King's Guard, okay. Well, I don't know. You guys will have to help me with some ideas here on how we can kind of worm our way out from under the Karstarks. Because right now, I think we're kind of at their mercy until we have a big enough army. We can't, you know, really afford any mercenaries. And even if we could, 
it would only be enough to like stalemate them at the very best. What's here? Righteous imprisonment of him. What did he do? He seeks to kill Howland. Okay. Well, can I just tell you to stop? Yeah, okay, I'd rather do that. He's fairly loyal to me and uh, the only competent commander I have under me, so... Hmm... I don't think I want to do that, because if I decline, we go to Ward, and he's just going to beat the crap out of me. Let's see... Investigate... Different legitimacies... Fabricate a claim on the High Lordship of Carhold. That would be interesting. Let's see... No, don't do any of that. Hmm. I wonder if maybe trying to kidnap one of his sons? I feel weird playing this way, because it's it's really the only way to play Crusader Kings, but um, it goes so against the uh, character I set Lord Nelser up to be. He was supposed to be someone in a similar vein to Eddard Stark, who is very noble and honorable and just, and we're playing him more like Littlefinger or somebody, just because that's that's the way Crusader Kings plays, but um, yeah, I just, I just don't see how we're going to worm our way out from under these guys. Oh, and they have all this too, so they could potentially have a lot more than 3,000, including all those. Now, we're not really making any money either, which is unfortunate. Um, let's see, we don't have any trading posts or anything. Oh! We just had our 50th birthday, and now we're all gray. Let's see. Maybe I can form some sort of alliance here. Let's see. Malador Umber, huh? Would the Umbers potentially want to put me on the throne of Carhold? Let's see. Malador, are you the... No. Brun is the main regent here. Could we potentially arrange a marriage? Do you have a daughter? Um, no, it doesn't appear that you do. Does anybody nearby have a daughter? No. How about you, Malador? No, you don't even have any children. Huh. Let's see, how about the Boltons? I don't like siding with the Boltons, but we may have to. I don't like that they did that. They should have made uh, Ramsay Snow a bastard, because that's totally a thing in this game. Oh well. Anybody else? Let's see. Lud Whitehill. You do have a daughter. Hmm. I feel a bit nervous about a betrothal before I can see what her stats look like. And she's also n not a follower of the old gods like we are. I wonder, is Eddard Stark? He should be. Whoa, what's going on here? Oh, autosave. Always gets me. Yeah, he follows the old gods. It's interesting that they don't all do it. Um, let's see. Robert, we will educate you ourselves. Once again, just because we are the best character in our kingdom and the most well-rounded. So, Robert and Rook, perfect. Um, unfortunately, Ryland's going to have to be brought up by somebody else, but at least we have enough money to where we can uh, potentially give him a better education. At least, uh, I'm hoping we will. He's significantly younger, so let's see. Six, six, he'll be seven fairly soon, and uh, he's only one, so yeah, we've got time. And I just don't think that's a good idea right now. We'll keep the option available, but I don't think I'm going to do it. Is there any other factions? I mean, there's not going to be any other factions. We're the only vassals, so... I just wish there was other options. I'm going to speed things up a bit here. And this is a very different playthrough, I think, than any of the other playthroughs we've done. We usually start out as some sort of king or higher lord, and then kind of expand from there. We're basically starting at the bottom like the bottom rung here, the lowest level 
lord that you can play in Crusader Kings. And so this is going to be a much more diplomatically oriented uh, playthrough, at least through the beginning, because obviously we can't just go around conquering when we're the little fish in a big pond. Um, Rook is very rude to people in your court. That's not okay. 20% um, chance he gains the trait Wrath, 40% chance he gains the trait Rude. I don't want him to be rude. Why would he be rude? Is his mother rude? No. So why would he be rude? Um, I'd rather him be Wrath than rude, to be honest. Let's see. I became rude. Did I or did he? Okay, so he's still rude. That's unfortunate. That's really unfortunate. Um, my liege, since I've arrived in Weepy Bay, there's never been... Yeah, yeah, okay. You're not that humble if you're constantly telling me how great you are. That sucks, though. That really sucks. Uh, let's see... Okay, so we're basically saying the same thing. I don't have an option not to, but okay. Let's see, he looks like he might faint. Um, let's try to go for Gregarious, that's a pretty good trait. Did he get it? No, he's still shy. God, we are not looking out at all. Dear Lord Nelser of Weeping Bay, I hereby invite you to the Grand Feast in Carhold. Your presence at the feast would be greatly appreciated, and I look forward to your attendance. Um, I'll accept it. I have, I have no reason to cross him until we can actually do something, so I may as well just kind of buddy up to him. Looks like the uh, War of the Usurper is almost over. I assume we can look forward to Robert Baratheon being king fairly soon. Let's see, Kingdom of the Vale. Lord Rickard greeted us warmly to his feast, wine was served, and the most delicious aromas came from the kitchen. Okay. And let's see, is, that's Bywater. Where's Storm's End? It's in this general area. Um, cool. Prestige. Prestige is nice. There's Storm's End. Robert Baratheon. It doesn't really look like Robert Baratheon, at least I assume. I mean, based on the show doesn't really look like him. I don't know how he's described in the books. Lord Stannis and Lord Renly. Stannis is already balding at 20. That's unfortunate. Oh, yeah, it's over. To all subjects of Lord Paramount Eddard, the inheritance of High Lordship of the Neck has been thrown into question after the untimely death of Lord Howland Reed. He left no clear heir, and so I hereby name Jayana Wet his lawful heir. When did Howland die, and why? It was slain by Sir Arthur Dane in personal combat. Oh. In the show, I thought he survived, but I guess in the books he doesn't. And... Who are you? His wife? Yeah, okay, so he nominated his wife. That makes sense. Stormlands of one, okay. We kind of assumed they would, and I think, yeah, it's been changed to reflect that. So King's Landing is now under Baratheon control. And I wonder if... Did it update his marriage to reflect that he's married to Cersei now? No, I'm sure there'll be an event or something, though. Jonas has been a leal and able servant, having successfully completed many tasks in aid of Weeping Bay. It would be seen as the right and honorable course to reward him with certain incomes and grants, so as to foster greater loyalty. Um, I give him 2.4 gold. Sure. That's not very much, so I can spare it. Although I'm not making very much. We are at least turning some sort of income. We get like one gold a month, so it's not terrible. Not terrible, but it certainly could be better. I just don't know what else we can do to kind of speed this along, so you guys will have to help me out with that. 
All right, well, I think that's been enough for one episode, so we'll go ahead and break it off here, and we'll pick back up in the next episode. Hopefully you guys can come up with some decent ideas on how to worm our way out from under the car starts, because I'd like to become a lord of the north in our own right, rather than a subservient lord to another lord. Um, I'd also like to take East Melt for our own. It's not anything compared to car hold, but at least we can start, you know, accruing some territory and building some small little lordship for ourselves. And from there we can kind of figure out what to do. But yeah, you guys will have to throw me some suggestions as to how we can maybe do that. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching. I had a great time playing some Crusader Kings 2 with you, as always. And I look forward to seeing you back here for the next episode.